Well, well, well. Here we are once again in the depths of the swamp looking for some creepy and unknown creatures. These subscribers have once again sent in what they claim to be true encounters with unknown cryptic creatures. As always, it is up to you whether you believe them or not. If you have a story you would like to share in a future video, whether it be a cryptid creature or something else, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp, as stories like yours to help keep this show going. Joining me today is Somber Reads. He helped me read story number two, and if you enjoy his voice, please go check out his channel and potentially subscribe. He uploads creepy stories all the time, and I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Now, without further ado, let's get into these creepy, allegedly true cryptid encounters sent in by viewers just like you. Hello Swamp, I would like to tell you my most serious and close encounter with what I assume was a skimwalker or maybe even a wendigo, I'm not entirely sure. As a little background, I love listening to creepypastas every day. It's sort of an end of night entertainment when I'm not willing to stay awake for much else. Most of the time I get paranoid and I'm kept awake by most of these stories. I live off the grid and my house and business that I live behind are all powered by generators. One night, I was playing a game in the power cut. I was in total pitch black and I had started cussing up a storm as I knew I had to just go out to the generator shed and crank the generator over or start the daytime one if problems occurred. I had grabbed my dinky flashlight and a shed key and started out the door. It's only about 40 feet away from my house, so all I have to do is go down the steps. I went and I got about halfway and heard what sounded like a growl, something that I've never heard in my life. I used to hunt and I am Native American. I know bear, wolf, and coyote, as well as hybrid wolf mutts and a couple of big cats. This felt so otherworldly and seemed like it echoed, but not in the sense that it was loud, but in the sense that it was not of this world. I froze in my tracks without looking around or making a peep because I knew better. I turned around and walked back to my house as quick as possible. Frick that. I listened to my elders and the legends. I was too afraid to even turn on my phone, as it would be giving off too much light and would give away my position, I thought. It was turned down to the minimum, and I was still so scared. I spent that night in the dark. If you think about them, they will come. I learned that the hard way. I'm even more careful about how much I think of them now especially when listening to these kinds of stories. Thank you, Swamp Dweller, for sharing mine. I love your channel and listen to you religiously. My friends and I were out camping in Maryland near a river. We set up a whole weekend where we would go tubing which meant we would get in these giant inflatable tires and float down the river. We'd get there on Friday, go tubing on Saturday, and leave on Sunday. It was me, my girlfriend, her best friend, and her boyfriend. The four of us were supposed to have a great weekend together that instead turned into a nightmare that will keep me away from the outdoors for good. I'm pretty sure I had an encounter with the goat man. We arrived on Friday with no fuss. We set up our tents at the designated campground and made dinner. There were no other campers around us since school had started up again, so we had the entire area to ourselves. We drank all night, the other three drinking more than me. I'm not really a fan of the hard stuff. Just a few beers. It was late at night, probably around midnight, when I had to go pee. So I left the campsite and walked down the path a little bit into the woods. When I found a good spot, I unzipped my pants and began to relieve myself when I looked ahead. And faintly in the moonlight, I could see a figure moving in between the trees. The moon was about half full, so... 
there wasn't much light to make out the features. The leaves and sticks crunched underneath it. Just as I was finishing up, this thing started to make this weird noise. It sounded like, like a muffled goat sound, but, but not quite right. Like a person was imitating a goat. It kept walking around like it was looking for something. But whatever it was, it scared the hell out of me. So I ran back to the campsite and acted like it didn't happen. My friends were so drunk. I don't know how they would have reacted. The next morning, I woke up before everyone else so I made breakfast. Around noon, we drove up the river about three miles using the camp's van service that would drop us off and we would tube down the river back to our campsite. I had pretty much forgotten about the weird encounter from the previous night until I had a weird feeling of being watched while floating down the river. It was all woods on both sides of the river, so I couldn't really confirm my feeling, but it ruined my whole experience while going down the river. It creeped the hell out of me. My friends started to feel it too when I told them. The other boyfriend claims he saw someone on the river bank, but no one else saw it. Once we got back to the camp, I told them what I saw Friday night, and it really creeped them out. That's when the boyfriend said the thing he saw kind of looked like a weirdly shaped man from a distance. We were all scared and decided that we'd leave first thing in the morning for checkout when the park rangers returned. After a while, we began drinking again and pretty much forgot about our fears. And for a moment, we were having fun again. It wasn't until later that night that my fear returned. We were all pretty drunk at this point, and we were doing that thing when you're drunk and you kind of have those heart-to-hearts with each other and talk about life. That kind of conversation. You know? We started to hear those noises again. It started off in the distance at first, then got closer and closer to our campsite. We heard noises all around us, twigs breaking, scratching on trees, and more of those goat noises mixed with a man growling. None of us had a weapon, so we were pretty scared and huddled close to each other. The scariest part was that the bugs stopped making noises. Eventually, we all drank some more and fell asleep around the campfire. I woke up in the middle of the night, probably because I sensed something was wrong. I don't know how to explain it, but it was like sleep paralysis or something where I couldn't move and couldn't speak. I opened my eyes and saw this terrifying thing between all of us. It had the body of a skinny man with with a distorted face and long unnatural arms. I saw that it was pacing back and forth between us. It would stop and look at my girlfriend and arch its back and act like it was chuckling. It kept twitching its body and sniffing the air around everyone. The goat man finally came over to me and looked me in the eyes. It had these dark pitted eyes and its mouth was wet with drool. It got closer to me and opened its mouth making that noise into my face. The noise must have woken the boyfriend and he started to scream which scared the creature and it ran off on all fours back into the woods. I was finally able to move, and I crawled over to my girlfriend and held her the rest of the night. First thing in the morning, we packed our stuff and checked out at the main lodge. We will never go back to those woods in Maryland again. There is something living out there, guys. And I'm telling you this story because I don't want anything to happen to you. A 
I never have told anybody about this story, but listening to your channel brought up the memories of one of the scariest nights I have ever had in my life. Thinking about that night still gets my heart racing. I believe my best friend and I had an encounter with what most people call Bigfoot. This happened sometime around 13 or so years ago, when I was in my early 20s. My best friend, who we will call Rich, we'd been best friends since high school, had recently graduated college with me. We were hanging out at his house on a Friday night, and as usual, we were playing video games, eating pizza, and having a couple of beers. Now, before you assume we were drunk, we had only had two beers each, and with food over the course of an hour, neither one of us does drugs of any kind either. His house is in the newer part of town. It sits on top of a hill on a dead-end street surrounded by trees. It is a steep hill, going from his front yard, flat where the house sits in an immediate steep drop into the backyard leading to the woods. The driveway leading to the garage on the side of the house is the same way, where it ends in an instant 45 degree decline into the backyard and woods. It was about 10pm when we went outside and were talking about parties and meetups. I remember it was a dark night with no moonlight and all his neighbors were not home as no one had any lights on. It was common for his street to be empty on weekends, so nothing was out of the ordinary. The only light was the ones we turned on outside his garage, which lit up our immediate area, but not much of anything else. We were talking, and I begin to hear some banging from behind his neighbor's house. It's as if someone is taking a branch and hitting the side of the house. There is a pause for just a few seconds, then I hear the banging on his house, but on the other side where we are standing. Then, the banging happens on the front of his house, and then back on his neighbor's house. It's as if someone is running from one house to another, banging sticks on the house to scare us or get us to move. My first thought was Sasquatch, because all the documentaries I've watched had taught me that this was a common behavior for them. The banging keeps going on for a few minutes as my friend continues talking. I'm not paying attention to Rich because my focus is on where the banging is coming from, as my heart rate continues to climb. Whoever, or whatever, was making the noise kept circling us and would get closer and closer to the driveway and bang on the house. I kept looking down into his yard to see if I could catch a glimpse of anyone or anything running from yard to yard, but... Unfortunately, it was much too dark for me to see anything. Then, finally, there was a loud bang on the corner of the house right next to us, probably about 10 feet away. It made me jump and I turned my head quickly and stared in that direction. I heard rustling there and felt like it was right there getting pissed off that we were not moving. It crossed my mind to go take a look but I was way too scared and didn't want to approach a very, very, very angry Bigfoot. I ask Rich, you hear that banging? It kept circling the house. He looks at me hesitantly and just says it's probably deer. But I know my friend, and he was nervous and trying not to think about it. He tries to engage me in conversation, but I'm too focused on the backyard and the banging resumes on his neighbor's house closest to us. I turn to Rich. It keeps getting closer to us, man. He just looks at me and says nothing. Then a handful of rocks come flying in our direction. They hit the side of the house right next to us. I look at him with the what the heck look. He says, probably just birds or something, with a really nervous voice. Then, another handful of rocks spray the driveway. I nervously step towards the edge of the driveway, closest to the neighbor's house to see if I could see anything. But it's just too dark. I turn around to look at my friend who is nervously watching in the direction, trying to keep his composure. He takes a couple of deep breaths, grabs his football, and throws it to me. I look at him confused and think to myself, freaking Bigfoot is possibly in your backyard, and you want to play catch. I then realizing this was his way of coping and keeping his mind off all the strange things going on, I throw the ball back to him and walk towards him asking, what bird will throw rocks at us? Something else is going on here. He doesn't answer and tells me to go a little longer. I run away from where the rocks are coming from to catch the ball. I throw it back to him asking, let's go check it out and grab a flashlight. He replies with, 
It's probably nothing, man. Relax. I kept my eyes on the neighbor's house where I last heard the banging in direction of the rocks. We threw the football back a couple of times again. Another bunch of rocks comes in our direction, and my friend just ignores them and continues pretending nothing happened. My heart is beating really fast, and I keep gazing over towards the neighbor's house when he says to go long. I take a couple of jogging steps towards the neighbor's front yard, but obviously I'm not watching the ball, and it goes off my palm and into the darkness of the neighbor's yard. I take a couple deep breaths and walk into the darkness away from the light. I'm looking around and keeping a close watch on the side of the house. I'm on high alert, and I get to the ball and bend down to pick it up. I heard what sounded like a growl. I take a deep breath and keep telling myself to stay calm. I look around in the darkness and turn towards the garage. I take a step towards my friend, and I hear heavy growling like breathing moving toward the other side of the house, coming toward me. I tell myself to stay calm and look around, but I was too scared to even look. I just took off as fast as I could towards my friend in the garage. I made it to the garage breathing heavily and turned around but didn't see anything. My friend suggested we head inside for a beer and more video games, which I agreed to. When I left later that night, I made him turn on all the lights so we could run around and see everything on the street. I didn't hear any banging or growling when I went out there, but... I kept replaying what happened that night for the next few days in my head. I tried talking to Rich about what had happened and how I heard growling when I went to get the ball, but he still to this day refuses to talk about it. The only thing he will say that it gets scary sometimes on dark nights. I think he has had encounters before or saw something that night and is just trying to block it out. He lived in that house for about 10 more years after that and his parents still live there. I spent plenty of nights there since that night, but never had another encounter like that one. My name is Tristan, but that's not important. The story I'm about to share with you is, though. This takes place in the state of Ohio, and heeds my warning when I tell you this. Whatever you do... Do not go looking or go hunting for what I now know is a skimwalker. Everyone has told me that they are not real. I really pity those who say that, because that is far from the truth. After what happened to me the other night, I disagree with anybody that tells me different. A few nights ago, my ex-military buddy, we will call him James for the sake of privacy in the story, woke up one morning to find his dog absolutely mutilated by an animal, the thing that got him made it look like it killed the sweet teddy bear of a dog for sport. Upset and determined to bring down justice upon what animal had killed this innocent family pet, not to mention thinking of the welfare of his children that played there, he called me up to come up there and investigate on what had happened. Mind you, his dog is fairly large, so whatever did this had to be the size of a mountain lion or bigger. A little bit about myself. I am an ex-army ranger the baddest of the bad. Needless to say, I am not terrified of anything because five years prior, I used to hunt down monsters of our country during operation. I have an inherent resolve for living, but I now know I was not prepared for this. At the time, I wasn't the least bit afraid to shoot anything that was a threat to myself or my friend, being the definition of a man that has had nails for breakfast as an ex-military vet. I definitely took him up on his offer, and boy, do I regret it. I should have just said no, but still following a moral code I had back when I was in the military, I helped him out because that's what you do for a fellow brother. I looked at the ground near the scene of the crime and noticed something odd. The tracks that this thing left behind resembled footprints, but one minor difference. There were four divots in the dirt imitating that this thing had claws. To make matters worse, the direction it had headed in had huge claw marks like a bear or a deer was scratching trees. It was also bipedal. That part freaked me out, but what freaked me out even more was when the footprint stopped and I saw broken branches above me. This thing, whatever it was, this skimwalker I guess, whatever you want to call it, could climb the trees like a monkey. A few nights later, 
my friend calls me up saying that he caught the thing on camera. As I review the footage, I was in awe. This hairless, pale, skinny thing would make Shaquille O'Neal look like a dwarf. Towering over his industrial garbage cans, that thing would come up to my chest. This thing, however, made them look tiny. It was out back and had this long, naked, pale body. I don't, I don't know how to describe it anymore. This thing was going through the garbage can eating anything it found yummy the night prior. This thing looked like the cave beings from the movie Descent. No joke. Right then and there, I did research on how to kill these things. Apparently, silver or fire is how you do that. My buddy and I, the following two days, go out to kill this thing. I have my pistol loaded with silver bullets I crafted, a flare gun, and a silver spear. We go out to kill it, and for those that care, I wore under armor, my wing holsters, a few magazines, a leather jacket for protection, with a silver combat knife in the case, just in case it decided it wanted a kiss. I had a saddlebag equipped with a first aid kit and a grappling hook in case I had to run from this thing, and I came upon a cliff along with other pieces of equipment to allow me to better hunt this creature just in case I needed it. We get to his cabin and set up. After a few hours of talking and laughing about old times, we both shared together during our time in service. We hear what sounds like his wife, but it's all wrong. J J James... Help me, J James. I, I, fell, I can't get up. It sounds like his wife, but it's all wrong, almost robotic. Chills run down my spine, realizing that this thing is near. We hear footsteps running in circles around the cabin, at an almost inhuman speed. I look outside the window and I see this pale, seven to eight foot tall man with pointy ears and a long face, with sunken eyes, stare at me as if it was terrorizing my soul without mercy. Terrified, but filled with mission and courage, I open the window to pull out my pistol and shoot it in the head. It lets out a huge scream that is almost deafening. I felt as if an explosion went off next to my ear from how piercingly loud it was. It flopped around like a fish out of water on the ground as if it actually was injured. Suddenly, it goes on all fours and runs away like a spider. I watched it twist and contort on all fours running for its life like a spread out arachnid. It went back into the woods, all the while howling out and screaming in anger and hurt. I have never been more terrified in my life. This thing took a round smack dab in the forehead and was able to run away as though nothing had happened to it. We packed up our stuff and drove back to his house. After that, I went home and never saw the thing since. Believe me or don't, I will tell you these things are real and the very reason I won't go camping. About two years ago, me and my buddy that we will call Sam were going to do some coyote hunting on some land that was owned by another friend of mine. Now, to give some backstory, I was around 22 at the time, and I've been hunting and have been in the outdoors since I was able to walk, and my buddy Sam has been doing the same. Now, the land we were hunting on has a 30-acre plot, and it was literally in the middle of nowhere. The nearest town was roughly around 30 minutes or so away, and probably about 10 minutes away from the nearest neighbor. Now, if you're an avid hunter and outdoorsman, being so far away from society is what you look for when hunting or being out in nature. So, we got to the land around dusk. It's mid-October at the time, and a little chilly in the Carolinas, but that made great weather for hunting coyotes. To give you a bit of a layout of the area we were hunting in so you can get an idea, we were in about a 3-acre field with about 100 yards from the tree line. Our plans were to try to bring the coyotes out into the opening to get a good shot. Now, if you know much about coyotes, you know that they are really a pain, they kill livestock such as small cows and sheep. Not far from me, just a year ago, actually, a coyote actually dragged a small child that was playing in his yard out into the woods until the little boy's mom came out beating the coyote with a broom. So, 
Coyotes are really something that needs to be hunted. Anyways, back to the story. We sat up on the back of our trucks and set up all the calls and started hunting. About an hour passed and we had not much luck, other than hearing the coyotes howl in the far distance. Now, if you've never heard a coyote howl, it is actually pretty creepy and will make your skin crawl. A lot of people don't think this, but coyotes are very smart and can smell like a deer. So if they smell you, then you might as well pack it up. So me and my buddy decided to give it about another hour and we went to pack it up and leave. Even though we haven't had much action, it was still fun to be out in the dark in the middle of nowhere. We were all armed with rifles, shotguns, and handguns on our side. It was still a little spooky to be out there, and it gave us quite a rush. So about another hour or so passes, and I was going to retrieve my predator call, but here is where things get a bit strange, and to be honest, just a little bit scary. As I jumped off the back of my truck and started walking towards the tree line to get my call, that's when we heard this horrifying screaming sound. The best way to describe it is to picture a man mixed with a cow letting out a scream. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I know that's weird and it, it doesn't make much sense, but that's really the best way I can describe it. Now, as it let out the scream, I was absolutely frozen with fear. I've heard every sound that every animal makes in this area, and this is like nothing that I've ever heard before. So about a minute passes before I turn back to look at Sam. I'm still standing in place and haven't made a step, forward or backward. My buddy's face looks just as terrified as I'm sure mine did. So I go to step forward to continue retrieving my call because I didn't want to leave it out there. I paid like $200 for it. As I got to the call, it let out another scream. This time it was louder and closer, and I felt my heart in my throat. So I grabbed the call and booked it back to the truck where my buddy was waiting, and his rifle pointed over my head. He was just waiting for whatever this thing was to jump out and make us a meal. But we waited for about five minutes and nothing happened. It just got quiet, as nothing had ever happened in the first place. So my buddy decided to fire off around into the ground to scare this thing off so we can get into our trucks and get out of here safely. But as soon as he did that, all it did was make this thing mad, and we could feel it scream in our bones. We gave up on trying to be safe, and jumped in our trucks and gassed it out of there. We got out of there as fast as we could. Me and my buddy talk about this from time to time, trying to figure out what this thing might have been, but we really never got any answers. We haven't been back since. If anyone has any idea what this thing may be, please let me know in the comments down below. And thank you Swamp Dweller for sharing my story. Thanks for listening to these creepy, allegedly true cryptid encounters sent in by viewers just like you. If you have a story you would like to share in a future video, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. If you enjoyed these stories, please hit that like button, as it really does help me out a ton. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. If you enjoyed my friend, Somber Reads, who read story number two today, please check out their channel. You can find the link to do so in the top of the description. It would mean a lot if you subscribed and supported their endeavors. They read scary stories, and I'm sure you'll enjoy his voice and his work. If you guys aren't aware, you can download your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, Podbean, and pretty much everywhere else you find podcasts. I know not everybody has the data to listen to these on YouTube, so this is a good option for you. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting the Swamp. Without you guys, I can't do this on a daily basis, so I just want to show you my appreciation. So, to do that, I will be giving away some free Swamp Dweller shirts. All you have to do is comment down below your favorite Swamp Dweller scary story of all time, and I will pick one at random in a couple of days. Thank you guys so much as always. 
And if you made it to the very end, today's code word is good deed. Comment that down below to let me know that you made it all the way to the end, and to confuse everyone who didn't. See you guys soon. Tally ho.